Well, this is not good. The U.S. military is on high alert in the Middle East, more so than they usually are because the U.S. military has always been in the Middle East. But here's what's happening. All of the sudden, you have U.S. forces getting attacked, and all of a sudden, you have new factions showing up that no one's ever heard of, and this is a bad thing. Some might say worst case scenario. So let's go ahead and dig into this. Okay, so all of a sudden, we have this faction called the Islamic Resistance in Iraq. And if you go ahead and try to look at the CIA database, which is public, where you can see the list of the bad guy groups, you can't say the name on here, uh, this is not a name on any list on the internet. In fact, when you go and when you look these guys up, this is what pops up: the Islamic resistance in Iraq. Now, speculation time. Many people are saying, "Well, this is just the coalition or militia groups who are coming together in Iraq who have one common goal, one common enemy: United States." The other speculation is this is literally a new ragtag unit who have decided to come together and to attack U.S. forces in Iraq. Why not? They're in our backyards. So let's go ahead and take them out. Now, the reason why I'm saying this might be a worst case scenario, because even though we've never heard of these guys before, it only takes a little bit of a spark to ignite a new revolution. I know that sounds so cheesy, but understand this. As the United States has prolonged their wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, these units started rather small, not as big as they ended up being. And, you know, the motivation kept coming and coming, and all of a sudden you have actual factions with rather sizable forces now fighting the U.S. military in two separate wars. Wars. And so, yes, we've never heard of this faction before, but who knows what they could be. If they are a coalition of forces, still, now there is the motivation there to fight U.S. troops. So, of course, the response from the U.S. military, prepare for another type of war or prepare for more conflict. Straight from the Department of Defense, and again, please stick with me, following detailed discussions with President Biden on recent escalations by Iran and its proxy forces across the Middle East region, today I directed a series of additional steps to further strengthen the Department of Defense posture in the region. These steps will bolster regional deterrence efforts, increase force protection for U.S. forces in the region, and assist in the defense of Israel. I keep saying this, regional stability is why we are in the Middle East, but to be honest with you, it looks like the reason why U.S. troops are currently get attacked is because... Uh, Israel is our ally, and if there's a contest between who these proxy units hate more, Israel or the United States, um, it's almost a, a draw. First, he talks about the Navy. First, I redirect the movement of the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group to the Central Command Area of Responsibility. This Carrier Strike Group, in addition to the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group, which is currently operating in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea, it will further increase our force posture and strengthen our capabilities and ability to respond to a range of contingencies. Now, of course, we we know the U.S. Navy is going hard uh, in the Middle East. We'll actually talk about the incident that happened near Yemen where the U.S. Navy intercepted an attack. But before we get to that, the U.S. Navy has straight up said we are prepared for combat operations. If we see you moving in an area and we know you're a bad guy and you're walking around near our guys, we're going to take you out. And the U.S. Navy has sort of already been doing that. Now, the wording here is deterrence. But if you ask me, it looks like this was more of a force escalation where these small groups don't care about deterrence. Like, what is the U.S. Navy going going to do all the way in the Mediterranean into Iraq. We're still going to we're still going to attack US troops. Now again, look, I know I'm oversimplifying the matter here, but nonetheless uh, all of these carrier groups don't seem to stop these proxy units from attacking Israel and the United States. Thing else that's cool, I have also activated the Department of Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, THAAD, battery as well as additional paid additional Patriot battalions to locations throughout the region to increase force protection of the US forces. And this is the big one. Finally, I have placed an additional number of forces on prepared to deploy orders as part of a prudent contingency planning to increase their readiness and ability to quickly respond as required. Now, if I had to speculate, these are going to be your light fighters, 82nd Airborne, 101st, possibly 10th Mountain. Now, he didn't speculate if it was U.S. Army, but those are typically going to be your units that deploy quickly or really even the 173rd because they're right there in Italy. Now, as much as this is in the news, it's almost like the quote unquote mainstream media is sort of overlooking the fact that we are getting sucked back into the Middle East. Now, again, we have always been in the Middle East, but it's been a while since all of a sudden we've had a lot of hype of, hey, something might pop off, something might go down, and you literally have the Pentagon saying, we are sending all of these assets to deter something bad from happening because things are already happening that are bad.
And speaking of bad things that were stopped, uh, the U.S. Navy down in the Red Sea managed to stop an attack from the Houthis down in Yemen. Now, if you don't know who the Houthis are, they are an Iranian-backed faction in Yemen who are pretty much just trying to stir the pot with the Saudis. You know, you have differences between the Sunnis and Shia. Nonetheless, the Houthis are well-armed, and they do have the capabilities to actually reach Israel all the way from Yemen. And all of a sudden, you had a pretty big rocket attack and drone attack heading up the Red Sea and the U.S. Navy just decided to intercept it. Now, a really big misconception, and the U.S. Navy tried to debunk this real quick. In no way, shape, or form did the U.S. Navy feel like they were being attacked. Nonetheless, they were not about to just sit there and find out, and they managed to totally suppress the attack. And here's a bit of a visual on how far Yemen from Israel is, about 1,822 kilometers away, which is 1,132 miles away. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I was a combat engineer. I was not a missile defense guy. I'm just being very transparent. So I have connections to people who are in this field, and I ask them, hey, do they have any chance of actually reaching Israel? And this is what I was told. Yes, they do have a chance of reaching Israel on a perfect day. If there is no missile defense systems, if Saudi Arabia is not paying attention, if the U.S. Navy is not around and Israel's Iron Dome all of a sudden was shut off, they could reach Israel. But understand this, the Saudis, the Red Sea already has defense systems there. Israel is always on high alert. It's highly unlikely the Houthis will ever, ever be able to touch Israel. But again, the ability is there and the threat is there. And they have shown that they are willing to give up their limited resources to try and attack Israel, even though the attack was suppressed. Now, the main point being is that the U.S. military is quite literally in combat operations beyond Israeli borders and beyond boots on the ground. I can't remember the last time the U.S. Navy started to actually get down and be really the tip of the spear of this entire uh, deterring efforts and taking out um, projectiles in the sky. Because the U.S. Navy up in the Mediterranean, they're also, you know, getting down with Hezbollah, or at least they're in charge of trying to suppress Hezbollah from launching more and more attacks into Israel. Now, one unfortunate location that got attacked by rebel groups, we don't know who did it, was Al-Tamp base in Syria. Now, this base is very important because when you look at the location of the base, you'll notice it's nearly in between three separate uh, countries, Iraq, Jordan, and Syria. Al-Tamp, when I was doing some research, um, it generally is in charge of trying to do reconnaissance on any sort of factions, trying to get into Jordan, and then from there getting really close to Israel. So al Tamp, what they're trying to do is, again, stop the logistics trains or try to knock it down with the proxy units who are trying to get into Syria to Lebanon and then down to Israel. So that is presumably why al Tamp was recently attacked. And again, you did have minor injuries. Luckily, nobody was taken out, or thankfully. Um, and other than that, El Tomf probably can expect to see more action or that region of Syria because there's further speculation and further details that Iran is starting to send more and more troops into Syria to try starting another front against Israel. Now, of course, the main perpetrator of these proxy units is always going to be Iran. Everybody swears allegiance to Iran, and Iran is the puppet master from Yemen to Iraq to Syria, and you have a list of all of these different units who are all tied to Iran. But again, you know who's not on that list is, of course, the, uh, what's their name again? The Islamic Resistance in Iraq. Again, they're so new, I didn't even know their names. But yeah, Iran is pulling the strings, and everyone knows it. Now, the question is, is the United States going to do anything about it directly to Iran? Probably not, other than sanctions, because the U.S. military does not want to get down in another conflict, a never-lasting conflict. They already are trying to mess with proxy units and trying to suppress the attacks from the proxy units on U.S. troops and Israeli uh, units. Something else we have to consider is that as long as the U.S. military is tied to Israel in this war, the more we can expect attacks. Finally, there was some good news where U.S. citizens were released hostages from Hamas uh, to the Red Cross back to, to U.S. custody. Now, here's what the speculation is and why I'm even adding it into this video, is that the United States does not want Israel to initially go into Gaza immediately. It looks like there's a bit of suppression from the United States themselves uh, to stop Israel from going into Gaza to hopefully get more hostages. Because the second the invasion starts, um, we're done with these hostages. We keep talking about them like this is a movie. This is such a one-off. I think everyone is shocked it happened. Thank God it happened. But again, the speculation is Hamas did it for humanitarian aid. But to also pin the United States in the corner of, we just helped you, U.S., and now all of a sudden you're attacking us, everyone go after the U.S. But again, 
main point of this is we don't know how long the siege of Gaza is going to last. There's other rumors that the Israeli government doesn't even want an invasion of Gaza, but the U.S. military or the Israeli military is ready for an invasion. So again, look out for some sort of suppression or outside forces trying to tell Israel, do not invade Gaza yet. Let's see if we can get more hostages. And in conclusion, and I know this is supposed to be about the U.S. military, but we need to add this in there. The tunnel system has been such a uh, topic of discussion for everyone in the news who is covering this. Israel has no idea where all of the tunnels are other than there are a lot of tunnels. Now, Israel has leaked data or former maps of where the tunnels are, and Israel keeps pounding Gaza with these bunker busters trying to get into the earth, trying to knock out these tunnels. But again, when you have the actual son of one of the founders of Hamas saying, you guys will never be able to defeat these tunnels unless you use gas, Israel is going to have a very hard time trying to get into Gaza. The main point being is that this might be the deterrent from Israel to not enter Gaza. So we'll see what happens. As long as the United States is tied to Israel, and as long as Israel prolongs this war, expect more and more attacks on U.S. soldiers and U.S. troops all across the board, from the Navy, Marines, everyone. So we'll see what happens. Nonetheless, we are wishing for peace in this conflict, but it looks like it's only getting worse and worse, unfortunately.